Picture this. It's a moonlit night and a bat swoops through the dark sky, zigzagging after insects. It lets out high-pitched squeaks, using echolocation or sonar, to see its world in the darkness. Now imagine being that bat. What does the world feel like through its ears and wings? Thomas Nagel, a philosopher, famously asked this exact question in a 1974 paper titled, What is it like to be a bat? He wasn't literally interested in bats for their own sake. He used them to explore a mystery about consciousness. Specifically, Nagel wanted to highlight the idea of subjective experience, the personal, inner what it's like feeling of being a conscious creature. The big question, what's subjective experience? Nagel pointed out that for any conscious being, there's something it is like to be that being. In plain language, there's a unique way the world feels from the inside to a bat or to a dog or to you. This is what philosophers mean by subjective experience, the first-person perspective on the world. For example, there's something it's like for you to taste chocolate or hear your favorite song. Those experiences have a certain feel to them. Only you can truly know what your chocolate tastes like to you or what your music sounds like to you. Nagel's key insight is that if a creature is conscious, it has this inner world of experience. It feels like something to be that creature. That's the core of the what it's like idea. Now Nagel asks us to apply this idea to a creature very different from us. A bat. Bats are mammals, so Nagel assumes they do have conscious experience, but their way of perceiving the world is wildly unlike ours. They're largely nocturnal, have wings of skin, sleep hanging upside down, and crucially, they navigate by sonar instead of sight. We humans can imagine some of these things. We can picture flying in the dark, catching bugs, making echoing chirps. We might even role play in our minds. Okay, I'm a bat. I stay up all night. I hang from the rafters. I see with sound instead of eyes. Here's Nagel's point. Even if you imagine all those bat activities, you're still you imagining them. It tells you what it's like for a human to act like a bat not what it's like for a bat to be a bat. There's a big difference. You, as a human, might approximate the bat's life, but you'd be doing it with a human brain, human emotions, and human ways of thinking. The true bat experience, the way the world feels to a bat's mind, remains elusive. Nagel even suggests that if you could magically transform into a bat, unless you also had the bat's brain and point of view from birth, you still wouldn't quite get that alien perspective. In short, no matter how much you know about bats, you don't really know what it's like to be a bat from the inside. Nagel chose bats to make this clear because bats aren't totally foreign, they're fellow mammals, but are different enough to stretch our imagination. We can study a bat objectively in endless detail, measure its brain waves, map its neural circuits, observe its behavior, but all that objective information, as amazing as it is, leaves out the bat's subjective perspective. You could become the world's top bat expert and still wonder, okay, I know how a bat's sonar works in theory, but what is the bat actually experiencing when it uses it? Is it like seeing, like hearing, or something totally new? Nagel says science can't answer that question because it's a question about the bat's inner viewpoint, which we can't access. This idea might seem simple, but it strikes at the heart of the mind-body problem the question of how consciousness fits into our understanding of the physical world. Modern science, and a view called physicalism, tries to explain everything in terms of physical processes. For the mind, that would mean explaining thoughts and feelings entirely by neurons firing, brain chemicals flowing, and so on. Nagel's bat argument doesn't deny that the bat's experiences come from its brain. But it does say that just describing the brain processes isn't enough to capture the feeling of those experiences. There is a gap between the objective facts and the subjective feel. Think of it this way. A neuroscientist could know everything about how your brain processes the color red, what wavelengths trigger what cells, how the signals move, which part of the cortex lights up. And yet, that scientist still wouldn't know how red looks to you. 
In Nagel's words, there are facts about consciousness that can't be fully grasped from a third-person, outside view. To get those facts, you'd seemingly have to be the creature in question. This is why Nagel believed that our current scientific approach can't completely explain the mind, because it leaves out that first-person aspect. He wasn't saying that the mind is magical or non-physical, but he was highlighting that we lack a way to describe subjective experience in the language of physical science. As Nagel Riley noted, without consciousness, the mind-body problem would be much simpler, but with consciousness, it feels hopeless to bridge this gap. Nagel's bat example has echoed through decades of philosophy and cognitive science. It's often cited as a vivid illustration of the challenge of explaining consciousness. In fact, even philosophers who disagree with Nagel acknowledge how influential this thought experiment is. Daniel Dennett, a well-known philosopher of mind who's more optimistic about explaining consciousness scientifically, called, What is it like to be a bat? the most widely cited and influential thought experiment about consciousness. The paper sparked tons of discussion. It helped introduce the term what it's like into the vocabulary of consciousness studies as a shorthand for the subjective aspect of experience. In the years since 1974, many others have built on or responded to Nagel's ideas. Some, like Dennett, argue that maybe science can eventually tell us what it's like to be a bat by studying the bat's brain and behavior thoroughly. Others, inspired by Nagel, came up with new thought experiments to show the same intuitive gap. For example, the famous Mary's Room scenario, Frank Jackson's thought experiment, asks if a scientist who knows everything about color scientifically, but has never seen color, would learn something new upon experiencing it. These debates all circle around the issue Nagel raised the seeming inability of third-person science to capture first-person experience. Today, Nagel's question, what is it like to be a bat, is a staple in any discussion of the hard problem of consciousness. That is, the hard problem of how and why brains produce subjective experience at all. In philosophy classes and cognitive science conferences, someone will inevitably bring up the bat example when talking about whether consciousness can be reduced to brain processes or whether there's something extra going on. Nagel's little bat has left a big legacy. It reminds us that however much we map the brain, the experience of being the owner of that brain is a special kind of fact, one that we feel rather than observe from outside. Thomas Nagel's bat thought experiment drives home one key insight. Consciousness has an intrinsically subjective side, you can know everything about a creature's biology and behavior, but still not know how it feels to be that creature. This doesn't mean we should give up on science, but it means explaining the mind isn't just like explaining other things. There's a point of view involved, a something it's like, that makes the problem tricky. Nagel's 1974 paper made people realize just how profound that puzzle is. And it continues to influence how we think about minds, brains, and the nature of experience.